Episode 047 with Sam Picard. This episode was brought to you by my new book, Goodbye Busy, Hello Happy. Available now at all leading bookstores. Sam Picard began his dance training in street styles at the age of 15 and began ballet training at 18 under his aunt Jennifer Pickup Branner, formerly of the Frankfurt Ballet. Sam received a BFA from Cornish College of the Arts in 2013. In 2016, he was the chosen winner of Ellen's Dance Off competition and was a featured guest on the show. Sam has studied dance in Canada and at the Joffrey Ballet School in New York City. Sam has been a guest artist, lecturer and choreographer for multiple universities as well as taught as an adjunct faculty member. He has worked with notable choreographers such as Mandy Moore, Camille A. Brown, Victor Quejada and Yoon Ashanti Harrison. He continues to perform solos around the world and has been featured at multiple MLB games, the Harlem Globetrotters halftime show, and has done commercial work for Microsoft and So You Think You Can Dance. Currently, Sam hosts judges and teachers for Showstopper Dance Competition and also tours dozens of cities a year as a teacher, choreographer and performing artist. We had a wonderful time with Sam and we hope you enjoy this episode with Hello, Sam Picard. Welcome to everybody the One Dance. Voice Can Change the World podcast. I am your host, Tina Bangle, and I have my amazing students here uh, on the podcast and our amazing guests all the way from South Carolina. And uh, please welcome Christine, my student, and Jasmine. And yeah. I'm <laughs> Oh, nice. <laughs> and we have a beautiful guest. I just love your energy, Sam. This is Sam. Thank Picard. you. I feel like we're cousins because my your cousin is my very, very good friend, Pam Picard. And, yes. And I've followed you ever since we've seen you on uh, the Ellen Show. So um, right. your family is amazing. Oh, we're family. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I just, I am blown away by the amount of talent your family has. So. Yeah, it's pretty unbelievable. And I, and I didn't know that growing up, I didn't know how extensive and how amazing my family truly was because I just didn't know. And then the, the, the beautiful side of social media has given me the opportunity to witness what other people are doing that I, you know, share lineage with. And that just means so much to me. It's so inspiring and motivating and it just, it really reminds you that you're not by yourself, you know, in your own world. There's, there's other people that you share ancestry with and, and, and family with, and they're just, they're doing their own things. And it's awesome. That's really awesome. Sam. So tell us about what you do and tell us about all the amazing um, things that you <laughs> created for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I started dancing, uh, when I was about 15 or 16, when YouTube came out, so it was around 2005, and I'm from the Midwest, so there wasn't a lot of dance, at least in the town that I was born in, so I was sort of just doing it in my room by myself. I always knew from a young age I loved performing and entertaining. I, I just was running around just trying to pick, make people laugh, and like, hey, are you happy? Are you happy? What can I do? And so once I found dance, that was my way to do that in a way that people would be open to. So um, once I found the internet, I started self-teaching myself. And a lot of people in hip hop and street styles and th that, that engage in those cultures, a lot of them are self-taught. Well, most of us don't start in a classroom. So it's great if you have access to a studio or classes, but if you don't, there's a lot of self-teaching and that, that growth process is unique in itself. So I started when I was a teenager and then my lovely aunt, uh, Jennifer, my aunt Jenny, she was a professional uh, ballet dancer in Europe. She danced with uh, these amazing choreographers there and, and Germany especially. And I looked to her, I met her when I was about 
mm, maybe about 11 years old. And then she, like amazing family does, they offer to train you. She trained me in ballet for free, had the free 99 this family discount, let's go. And that changed my whole life. Um, just to see how far and how deep you could go with uh, dance and just art in general really changed my life. So after that, I started, uh, I, I went to college. I got a BFA in dance in Seattle. And then after that, I started teaching. I was dancing with a contemporary ballet company um, that had a lot of roots in African and Caribbean dance. So I started to really gain as much experience and knowledge as I possibly could as an artist and going to New York and dancing and training with the Joffrey Ballet and all these sorts of things like summer intensives and things like that. And my, my world just kept getting bigger, bigger and richer and richer. And I was just riding the wave. And then eventually, um, like, like you mentioned previously, I was on the Ellen show. Um, and I really got that opportunity, not just because of my dancing, but it was my work with kids. So I'm a teacher as well. And I love teaching young kids all the way up to adults. But at that time, I was only teaching about five-year-olds to about 10-year-olds, and I loved it. And, the, and Ellen was interested in celebrating that, which I will always be so grateful for. And after that, I had a lot of opportunities to go and teach, um, teach all over the world and perform. I judge sometimes like dance competitions. I host them. And I like to be on the performative side as well as the creative side. So I've been doing that for the last... Woo, 12 years now, I think. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice. That's incredible. That's so inspiring. And um, oh, thank you. It was just so amazing watching you on Ellen. And um, I didn't realize that you were you were Filipino. <laughs> so let's go. Yeah, so cool. <laughs> so I guess yeah, very that, proud of that. Yes, yes, we are too. Because, well, Jasmine's half Filipino and, and we're the rest of us are full. So like, yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I love that, I love that. So I think, um, well, Matthew was going to ask you a question next. Um, All right, hey, Matthew. Hi. <laughs> yeah, Um. so like what inspired you to actually start dancing and like did you always want to dance? Oh, I love this question. I love this, I love this. So when I was younger, I think I was about five years old the movie, a goofy movie came out and everybody laughs at this story because it is funny. It's a goofy movie. Nobody thinks of it as some like life changing movie, but I do. So when I, there was a scene in that movie where the, where Max, the high school character was trying to impress a girl in the audience. And at an assembly where all the kids get together, he dressed up like Powerline, who was the pop star figure in that movie to impress this girl. And when I saw the feeling that scene gave me as a kid, I was just, whoa, I could feel my spirit emanating and growing. It was just, it was incredible. It was a really lovely feeling. And that's when I knew there was something inside of me that wanted to be a part of that. I also wanted to create that feeling for people like, what's going on? Who is this? You know, in an exciting, fun way. And then not even a year later, my older brother was in a a um like a basically a male pageant at the high school it's kind of like a little competition for the senior guys you have to have a talent there's a q a section it's this, this whole thing it's just like a really fun thing that the high school did and he danced and i remember very vividly him dancing and just the way he was moving his body everyone in the audience was losing their mind including me but I was quiet about it because this is my brother I know how magical he is but I'm watching I'm watching other people that I don't know scream at him because of his physical magic that he's putting on so five and six is when I knew I wanted to be performing and entertaining because I had never gotten a rush or I was I've never been so joyful in my life so there's that <laughs> Did that inspire you? Yeah, I think that's truly amazing. It's like very inspiring story. Thank you, Matthew. I appreciate it. I, have you ever had a moment in your life that you feel like something made you feel just just purely joyful? Yes, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> can you can you give me a little something? What what's something that you've experienced? Uh something that really made me just really joyful was that um when I performed my song to um my grade, 
because uh I it's like the first time I've ever done that and it was just <laughs> truly, no! it was just truly beautiful just to see their reactions and my friends reactions and yeah the support and love that's you should be really proud of yourself for doing that I'm happy for you man that's awesome thank you yeah, yeah. being very humble <laughs> he, oh I'm sure he, um, oh I'm sure he created this the, the song and then also did a film clip and um it's just been a magical ride for you right yeah it really has <laughs> Yeah, so um, you, you'll need to check it out. Tell, tell I was going to say, know. share that with me once this is all over. I would love to hear and see and witness your magic, man. That's awesome. Yeah, so my song was dedicated to um the Frontliners. It's called Superheroes in Disguise. And recently, Beautiful. um I got to redo the song with um Tina's old producer, um Lionel Cole. So, yeah. Yes! Let's go! Oh, that's so awesome, dude. So happy for you. Thank that's you. Awesome. Keep it up. Yeah. That's really great. So cool. That's really great. Thanks, Sam. Well done, Matthew. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Matthew. <laughs> so Jasmine's got a question for you. Okay. Hi, Jasmine. Hi. Um, so what are some of the challenges that you had to overcome becoming an artist? And yeah, totally. Um, yeah, there are an infinite amount for sure, because life just keeps going and there's always new challenges. But I would have to say, honestly, the main one for me is me. My biggest challenges and obstacles were getting over things that were a little bit more internal. There are a lot of external challenges you'll have in your life, uh, things that you cannot control. Um, but for me, fear, self-doubt, in just general insecurity and anxiety, um, things like depression, um, some very serious things that we can have in, in our bodies and in our spirits. And those things have been very tough for me since I was young, but especially as I started to um, get deeper with, within art and dance. Because when you, are, when you engage in a very deep way of just your existence and how you wanna express it, there are going to be things, questions you need to answer and things that you find out about yourself that might be very uncomfortable. There are things that scare, scare you to death, um, uh, putting yourself out there, overcoming all sorts of things. So I would have to say most of my obstacles have been this and this. Um, however, I, everyone's challenges and obstacles are valid and we just need to find a way to find the strength and to persevere and really lean on our communities and and just be be kind to ourselves as we as we go through that journey. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that was an okay answer. Was like, amazing. Right. <laughs> amazing answer. Did you want to ask anything else? Yeah. So I, oh no, I appreciate you it. Know, we're all we're kind of all nodding our heads because that is. Um, a major part of being a performer, isn't it? Just yeah. having that challenge, the fear. Um, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, for me, like, that's like something that I have to deal with, especially when I perform. So like, when it comes to performing, like, how do you kind of, uh, I don't know if you get nervous or anything, how do you kind of overcome that? Yeah. So I was nervous before this podcast. Anytime I have to, oh yeah, absolutely. I, for me, I always want to be at my best for when I perform for people or when I engage with people. But at the end of the day, I can only have that intention. It might not always work out the way I envisioned it. But if I know that I'm giving my absolute best and I prepared and really cared about what I'm about to do, that's all I can control. So if I spend too much time dwelling on my fear and give it too much energy, it will start to have power over me. And that is not something that's acceptable because my goal of sharing and offering joy with people through dance and through performance is way more important to me than my fears. I will not let my fears and self-doubt drive the car. I want my joy and love to do that. So if I'm about to go on stage, I need to remember to breathe. <laughs> I need to make sure I eat enough. 
I need to make sure I get proper sleep if I can help it, which I'm a night owl, so that's very difficult. And I try to prepare and be as logical about the situation as I can be. I'm about to perform in front of a bunch of people. I care about this, so naturally I'm going to be anxious because it means a lot to me. So how about I lean on my preparation, my trust in myself and my love, rather than lean into my fears and self-doubt of what could go wrong? Because the fact is, something could go wrong anytime. So I don't need to put my focus on that. I'd rather put my focus on being with you all and having a really meaningful experience because this means a lot to me. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a big performance as well for school. So what you just said, I think I'm going to keep that in mind and probably oh, I- give my best shot and enjoy it while possible. So thank you. Y- yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and let's be fair. We want to see you succeed. The, your audience and the people that are witnessing you, there's a lot of warmth and, and love there. And if you just allow it to fill you up, and you will be nervous because you care, but if you just allow it to fill you up and share your gifts, because I, I'm sure they're just so beautiful, really, really enjoy it. Uh, great questions, guys. Well done. Um, yeah, because they have HSC, which is the highest school certificate. Um, here um, in, in Australia or in Sydney. So that's their yeah. final, final um, exams before they go to wherever they're going to so go. So there's a little element of pressure there for sure. Yeah, yeah. So um, okay. Jasmine was sharing her experience with her, her, um, with Ken. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, our, our school, where it's called St. Andrews College. Um, our teacher won like an ARIA award, so it's like pretty huge in Australia for music teacher yeah. of the year um, back in 2019. And he does wow. this thing annually called Creative Arts Night where people with skills such as drama, comedy, dance, music, he loves putting original content out there. We had like three original songs <laughs> on the night, which was really nice. <sighs> and um, during our dress rehearsal, basically, we I got on the mic at the keyboard and it wasn't working and he was like yeah that's just we're rushing through it so on the night I got up I had my ex in the crowd which is what I was dedicating the song to oh, and wow. I got up on the keyboard and obviously I was scared um I threw my jacket out in the crowd well his jacket out in the crowd because I wanted to emphasize that this is like we're done kind of thing Whoa. and <laughs> Oh, there are some things happening. Wow. (laughs) And yeah, so I got up on the keyboard. I stuffed up. But I mean, you can easily pick up from that. And then, yeah. Right. Wow. That just blew my mind. You're a rock star. That is very cool. You're having a personal experience and you're sharing it with us. And that is, that's so super valuable. Good on you. It is, yeah. I think I think that's important, being vulnerable like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because you learn uh, about yourself, but then other people watch you and get inspired and, and um, yeah, create things for themselves to make their lives better. So well done. Yes. And what about you, Sam? Like, did you, have you ever come across where something didn't go right in your performance, but you just had to? I'm, I'm sure there's plenty. <laughs> They're flooding back. Yeah. (laughs) What do you do to overcome it so you don't, you know, dwell on it too much and and get into that cycle of oh, that didn't work out. I, you know, some people will take it further and say oh, so hopeless. I I I want to give up. What do you right? What do you say to that? Oh, that's a really great question. Um, so obviously it depends on the severity or how I perceive the unplanned moment to be so if it's serious as in maybe I hurt myself or hurt someone else then we just have to be very pragmatic about it I need to make sure I'm okay and and how do I make sure I heal up and make sure that never happens again maybe from a mechanical standpoint or maybe I need to change my diet or workout routine so there's that there's that level or way of looking at it now if it's something that just maybe you know, I forgot a step or I slipped on stage. I didn't get hurt, but I 
you know, it was an obvious mistake. And those things have happened. When I did So You Think You Can Dance, I, we were filming a, an opening section. Mandy Moore had choreographed it. And it had rained out on the grass before filming. Oh, you know where this is going. So I was the only one that slipped during the take that they used. And I fell on my face. I had grass in my mouth. I had it all over my clothes. Luckily, I was in the middle to where there was a lot of people around me. But if you go and actually find me, you will see me fall and get back up on two. I fell down on one, up on two. Let's go. Now, there are times where you can just laugh at yourself like I did in that situation because I was there for fun. I wasn't trying to put a lot of pressure on myself. But if it's something that means something to you and if it's a mistake that really hurts you because there are mistakes that really hurt us because we don't feel like we were, we were at the level that we want to be when we present ourselves or perform or share something with somebody. Now, when that happens, sometimes you need to let yourself be upset. You can cry, you can be angry with yourself, you can scream into a pillow, have your moment alone where you can feel that because you don't want to repress it and you don't want to act like it didn't happen. If it's really bothering you, allow yourself to just sit with it for a moment. You can be in a dark room or whatever. You can be you know, out on the back porch, whatever you need to do where you feel safe to just have your moment. And it will inevitably play over and over in your head. You go, okay, I'm going to give you your time. Obviously, this, this is really bothering me, so I'm going to let it happen. And then there's a decision that will be made eventually, or you'll know instinctually most of the time, it's done. We're done. We don't need to dwell on that moment anymore. It's hurting me more than it's helping me. It's giving me motivation to where I don't want to make that mistake anymore. So I'm going to work harder. That's fine. You're learning and you're growing from that. But as soon as it passes that threshold for you to where it's taking up too much of your time and your joy and your mental energy, time to move on. And you'll find those ways to move on as you get older. It's just a process. So that's why I say sit with it because you need to go through those things so you can A, help yourself to grow. B, you can give that information to other people who might not, who might not know how to deal with it. And then they can take your word for it because you've been there. So it's kind of like this situation here where I'm able to give this, you know, sort of advice or insight on how I've dealt with it because I've been there. I've um, messed up lists. Uh, so I've done some classical ballet on stage and I've messed up lists. Not dropped necessarily, but even if that were to happen, it would feel that it all felt bad. <laughs> and I had to come to terms with, I didn't perform at the level I wanted to. I'm upset. Now we move on. I mean, that will never happen again. Or I will do everything in my power to make sure it doesn't happen again. How did that feel? <laughs> that was great. Sam, I love that. That's so important to hear that. It's a the process is the is an important thing and that's a huge drink bottle. <laughs> yeah, oh my goodness. My students love it. They're like, it's bigger than my head. I'm like, I know. And they they can't even pick it up. So the six year olds are like, ah so, so cute. cute. So cute. Yeah. So um does anybody want to expand on that or did you have any other questions? Y'all are so patient with my rambling. I love I just love you. Rambling is really amazing <laughs> information and um okay and I'm glad insights. so I'm glad I guess one of the questions is about animation you are so animated mm. and we love it hey it's just so for, for Aussies right Aussies are Aussies are quite laid back we're not oh as, I love that as, we're not as animated as um as the Americans Hey. <laughs> I love it. I love that. Love that distinction. <laughs> I think that it's really important for us as singers and performers to be animated. So mm. how do we do that? Maybe we can So yeah. So for me it's natural because it's a part of my personality. And I think that we should all embrace our parts of our personality that are most natural for us. And then once we do that we're comfortable, then we can try on other things. Because all, all my animation does is, I think it makes me 
relatable in a certain way. It, it communicates that I'm joyous and I'm passionate and people want to be in their own way, joyous and passionate. And we all express it differently. And so your demeanor doesn't mean you can't, you're not passionate or super, you know, expressive in other ways. It just might not be with your physicality or, or so, so on and so forth. However, as performers, when we have that element of acting, it doesn't always mean it's a falsity. It just might, it just means that we're trying on something else to get our point across. Right. So if I'm, let's say I'm doing movement that isn't natural for me. Like ballet is not natural for me. However, I'm conveying an idea through these physical lines and movement pathways that are clearly expressing something specific. And so I'm trying that. And now it's a part of my repertoire. It doesn't mean ballet is now so different for me. Now it's a part of me because I tried it on. So you can be very performative in your own way. Sometimes being subtle is your way of being expressive or passionate. So trying different things is my, I guess the best advice I could give. So maybe doing something completely out of your character and see how authentic that might feel because maybe in the context of the song that you're singing, that's what, what's needed. And you can find your own identity within that material. It doesn't mean you're not being true to yourself. It means you're being true to the material and bringing yourself into it. And I think that's a, a beautiful, beautiful process to, to be a part of. I just feel like what, everything you're saying right now is just like really inspiring for me, especially because oh. oh. I really love to perform. But I always have like those situations where I'm like kind of scared to go on stage and all those stuff. Um, but seeing how you know you're expressing your joy for dancing and all that, you know, it's hard for me. So yeah. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad. This is so off topic. I just really want to ask, but like that animal, is that your favorite animal on the back? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we were gonna talk about it at some point. So <laughs> yes. So flamingos are very um, important to me. I have a flamingo tattoo on my back and it's part of my uh, Instagram and branding and all that stuff. But more than that, it is sort of personal to me in a way that what I can say is most of the important moments in my life, there was some flamingo or the color pink present before I was on the show, before I've been on TV, before I performed at my graduation for college, before I moved away from my home and I left my family, um, there was always this present in some way, which I always thought was super funny. And now I've just uh, wanted to embrace it because it makes me happy. What's like something quirky about you or like, what are you very upset to with? Of, like, oh, other than the flamingo? <laughs> 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 well, okay. I, I, I do. I do remember this. Um, so I have a lot. I'm sure you can imagine. I have a lot of very quirky and silly things about me. That is part of how I like to exist. But something new and relevant for me is I just moved to South Carolina. So I'm originally from Missouri. And then I lived in Seattle for 13 years for the better part of my career and education. And then I just moved here a year ago. So <clears throat> it's very new to me. However, I have lived by the beach now. <laughs> Lovely. And you know, you know how when people say one of my favorite things to do is walk along the beach and it's like a joke. Yo, that's real. I love it. Walking along the beach, I'm just, I frolic sometimes. And I'm always by myself because I live alone. And when I go to the beach, I live in a local town to where it's locals only. There aren't really any tourists. So even on a sunny day, there might be 50 people. And then at night, when I like to go, because I feel the most alive at night, I go there and there's no one there. It's just this vast darkness with the uh, amazing eternal ocean and it just feels so overwhelmingly beautiful and I just like to kind of um think about what I'm grateful for and just kind of relax and breathe in the clean ocean air and be and and just kind of you know walk in gratitude so that has been something that I always used to make we all made fun of it right like I like to read books by the fire and walk along the beach like that's always been a funny thing 
But now that I do that, I get it. I get why that's a thing. So I love it. So I walk along the beach now. That's like my thing. So <laughs> I'm not even I'm not even allowed to go out to like the only thing that I can see myself is in my room. <laughs> I'm just like walking in my room instead. <laughs> my parents don't even let me go out. Uh. Yeah. I mean, I grew up in my room. That's all I did until I was 18. I was in my room practicing, watching videos. I love prints. I love uh, anime. I love things that make me really happy and make me feel passionate. And so, like, I was in my room for most of my childhood just trying to imagine all the things I wanted out of life. And by the time I became an adult, now I'm flying all over the world because that's what I've always wanted. And now I can really appreciate it because I know what it's like to not be able to do that. <laughs> so eventually I hope you get to see the parts of the world that you want to. Oh, you mentioned anime. Like, do you still kind of watch anime still? Or is... Oh, these are all anime stickers, girl. We love our anime. Oh, that's... <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love anime. Me and my brother watch it. I watched it as a kid, right? Because I'm born, I'm, I was born in the 90s. So that was one of the golden ages of anime. And then now there's some amazing technological advancements. I love manga. I just love, I love that whole world. It, it's really, yo, let's go. Let's go. I'm wearing an anime t-shirt right now as well. I almost did too. I was very close. I was like, oh, should I wear my Naruto or Hunter Hunter shirt? Now a little bit. Let's go. So I, I reckon, oh, that's yeah, fine. Um, I, I reckon Matthew is an amazing dancer. Like, yes. He, he loves, you know, Martha Jackson, as, as I'm sure you do, too. Yeah. So yeah. maybe, um, would you be open to maybe, like, teaching us a few little moves? Like, <laughs> I love that. Easy, easy moves. Hi. So when I was in, I sang when I was in, um, like grade school I was in choir so you know choral music and we had the acapella stuff and the show choir and all that fun stuff so that was like the extent of my singing career was in school but we didn't ne we never had that much choreography and what I wish we would at least have was that old temptation style of step touch oh my goodness there's nothing like a good step touch especially if you're one of the back background singers Oh, just on the mic like, ah, you. So I think one of the best ways to find the beat is a nice step touch. So I imagine I'm not, so w would this be my left leg from where you are? That is the left leg. Yes. Mirroring, yes. That is yeah, yeah, the left leg. This is the left. Okay, so I'm going to start with my left foot because that's my right. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to step with my left foot and then bring my right to it. And as I do that, I want my upper body to, oh, oh, we're getting expressed now. I see you. I see y'all. Ah. And then when you're feeling real, real confident, you can start to dip down and get lower. And, oh, and you want to throw a hip in there. Oh, my goodness. Look at us. We're professionals. Let's go. Now, that's a really great way to find a beat. And you all look phenomenal. I just love it. Now, if you want to add a turn in there to really spice it up, you can also, so let's say I'm going to the left. You can turn towards the left, do a circle, and then, ah! Uh, and then you go back the other way, turning to the right. Huh? Ah! Uh, so we can do that together. Basically, it's just one, two, three, four steps all together. Okay, so let's relax for a second. We about to do this. We're going to go to the left. And I'm going to start with my left foot. Five, six, seven, eight. Left, right, left. Together. Right, left, right. Ah, look at you. Look at you. Ah. <laughs> ah. And you know my last tip for that move? Every time you finish one side and bring your feet together, make it a big deal. Like, uh, 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 yeah, uh, 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 okay, woo, yeah, so my last one, that's just a little step touch, if you're ever just, you know when you're at a party, and everyone's like, there are people who are just really getting it, and you're like, I'm not there yet, I'm gonna eat some cake over here, that's when you hit that step touch, 
That, because you're you're basically saying I'm willing to have a good time, but I'm just not I'm not twerking yet. So I'll be right here. Yeah. So my last one, when you, you do feel the energy, I'm gonna turn to the left right here. And I'm gonna have my hands with little little finger guns like this. You can do two or just one. And I'm gonna circle them away from me, making a circle. Oh, look at y'all, y'all know what you're doing. I'm gonna bend my knees a little bit. And now as I go, I'm gonna body roll as it happens. Oh, look at you, look at you. And then you, then you can switch sides. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, we're doing it to the other side too. Stop looking so good, but don't. I love it. So yeah, you just wanna hit this one. You could do it small. Oh, or you could get real big with it. So that's all you right there. Sounds like class, guys. <laughs> and Sam, I'm amazing. We're gonna use Thanks. that for our next performance, I think. Oh hey! <laughs> I would love to see it. <laughs> Yeah, I think we should add that. Yeah. Um, so um, I've got a few more questions, just th a few more questions for you before we say goodbye. We are, Okay. We want to know what was one song that changed your life? Woo! So, you know, it's so fun because you knew how to do it. If you ask me what were my five favorite songs, you get 20. Yeah. So you ask me one, you ask me one, so you know you're about to get like three. Yeah. So, so when I was younger, uh, When Doves Cry was one of the first Prince songs I ever heard. And it made me see the world in a way that I had never seen it before or hear it or just it just blew my mind. Uh, and then Billie Jean by Michael Jackson, just the ferocity and the intention behind such crisp and passionate movement and, and singing. Billie Jean is definitely blew my mind and then WTF by Missy Elliott not because it's her best song but I was at one of the lowest points in my life when I heard that song and then after that song came out I was on the Ellen show dancing to that song so it literally was present just like the flamingo when my whole life had changed for the better so I have to say that it, you know, was a part of my literal life changing. And those others were really um, the start and the beginning of what, who I would eventually become as, a, as an adult. Oh, that's so beautiful. Uh, is that the song that um, the Missy Elliott song, was that the one with all the yeah. children dancing? In yes. The yeah. They, yeah. They did a, they did a bunch of different ones. They did one with, yeah, the, the kids and a bunch of people were dancing. That uh, I was on the show for it, and then she had her own music video that was really incredible. It's just, it's just an amazing song. And I, I <clears> forgot <throat> the girl, the girl that was on the was the main child uh, on the film clip. What was her name? I think, I think you might also be referencing Work It and Gossip Folks, where Allison Stoner was one of the main dancers yeah she's incredible love her and love watching her journey incredible dancer and performer in person um yeah yeah they, missy knows how to fix some amazing dancers <laughs> and we were lucky enough like seven of our students went to disneyland and they were mentored by allison so that was oh yeah that's amazing that's amazing so we have one last question, and this is what I ask okay. all all my guests: is what okay. what does one voice can change the world mean to you? Mm. One voice can change the world. So <clears throat> I would say that that is probably one of the mo more truer statements that one can say. Your voice changes the world every day. Uh, every single day. When you interact with someone, when you put your energy out or make a gesture or write someone or communicate with anybody on any level, you are changing your environment because you are actively putting your energy and your thoughts into the world. And I think because there's so many people, we think that's insignificant, but it's not at all. Everything, every interaction we've ever had has been a part of our story, which means it's also been a part of the story of the person or people we have interacted with. 
So I would say that that is very true. Our voices, whether it be audible or physical in a different way, or maybe with writing, those things have an impact on people, even when we don't think it does. So I would say one, every voice changes the world every day. And I would hope that we think about what we want to say, how we want to say it, and how that impacts the other people around us. What do you want to say with that voice? Beautiful, Sam. Thank you so much for have, being on the show. Thank you. It's, been, it's made up. Thank you for having me. You made my day. I was looking forward to this ever since you asked me. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm so incredibly grateful that you were able to um, make this happen. Uh, and let us know where we can follow you, how we can follow your journey, and uh, yeah, share us any links that you want to share. Absolutely. So I uh, emailed you some links about a YouTube channel I just started. The YouTube channel is called Everybody Dance. And basically what I'm trying to do is empower people to feel comfortable in their bodies and movement and just getting them excited. It's very silly. It's very, very silly. It's, it's mainly trying to be like a Sesame Street vibe of like really family friendly and really aimed at kids. But I think anybody can find something to enjoy about it. So there's also a TikTok and a Instagram account linked to that. Uh, everybody Dance Five. I just made the TikTok, so <laughs> let me catch up to everybody. And then my uh, then I have a personal Instagram. So so yeah, I sent you those links, and and I can also send them again. But yeah, please come and stay in touch. And I would love to come out there and perform or teach. I you know I have family in Australia, as you know. You're my family, so I need to I need to get out there. Oh, definitely, definitely. Let us know when you're plan to come here and we'll yeah we'll do a workshop especially for you <laughs> ah, you're so blessed. Blessed. thank you thank you you're so thank blessed. you so much um so thank you to matthew and and jasmine thank and you matthew thank you jasmine do you guys have any thank last words me. yeah i just <laughs> want to say that this has just been so inspiring and motivate but motivational just hearing you your past experiences and because we can learn from that and actually apply those like lessons and ways to mm -hmm. um just feel stronger when we perform like yeah yeah i appreciate you saying that thank you matthew appreciate it and i'll make sure to like uh, check out your youtube channel and see like how i can <laughs> So it has two episodes up right now and I'm making a third episode coming up. So so there's not a lot, but there's you'll definitely get the vibe from the first two episodes. <laughs> cool. And yeah, kind of just to reiterate on what Matthew said, it was really nice to actually like even get some advice from you, especially because I'm going through a hard time lately. So it was really nice to hear from you in that sense thank you i wish you all the strength that you need but I, I know you're obviously very capable but just to let you know that there are people who really care about you and and we're glad you're here so whatever struggle you're going through uh you're gonna get through it and you're gonna be better and people are just glad that you're you're here so i i appreciate you sharing that with me thank you Desmond. thank you matthew and christine and thank you sam you are just Christina. so you know, we can't wait to meet you face to face. We definitely yes. have to make it happen. So we'll make it happen. Thank you so much for the opportunity. It was really nice to meet you all and talk to you all today. Thank you so much. Sam, I love you. Bye. I right, love y'all too. Bye. Thanks, Sam. Bye. Thanks. Uh... <laughs> well, that was fun. I love that. <laughs>